Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Zoe, and I completed my practicum with the Global Child Project, uh, which is a program of research based here at the University of Victoria. So the United Nations Convention on the Rights of the Child, CRC, is the most ratified human rights treaty in history, with 197 states parties. It provides a framework of 54 child rights, also called articles, which are used to guide policy and legislations for children under the age of 18 years. The CRC is the un almost universal and unanimous intention to do everything in our power to protect and promote children's rights to survive and thrive, to learn and grow, to make their voices heard, and to reach their full potential. The Global Child Project is led by Dr. Zipa Vagri and includes a group of international child rights ad uh, advocates and academics working under the auspices of the United Nations Committee on the Rights of the Child with a mandate to create a comprehensive monitoring platform for the CRC. The goal is to improve states parties' accountability, monitoring, and implementation of the CRC by creating a monitoring tool called Global Child. During my practicum, I participated in the development of the child rights indicators, which are a set of criteria or parameters that help demonstrate if a right is being fulfilled, as well as developed and executed the external review of the appropriateness of the indicator sets. For my culminating project, I took one of the child's rights, specifically Article 22, Migrant and Displaced Children and Children Seeking Asylum, and applied the indicators to Canada, and this was to demonstrate a real-life application of how the indicators will be used. A preliminary review of the literature demonstrated that the health and development of children on the move is particularly at risk. As you can see here, there are various factors that affect the child's ability to thrive. With this information in mind, I then looked to the global child indicators, which are separated into three categories. Structure-related indicators ask about government structural commitment to that right. So that's legislation, policy, budgetary allocations. Process-related indicators collect data about the processes in place to support that right. And outcome-related indicators which gather evidence about changes in children's lives and environment. For the purpose of my report, I focus strictly on the seven structural indicators of Article 22, and some of which are presented here. The information I collected was guided by the indicators and allowed me to identify some of Canada's strengths and shortcomings in realizing this child mm -hmm. right. Uh, and this information uh, was used to develop some recommended areas of improvements, which I will discuss later. Uh, I then reviewed Canadian data, uh, and this was to determine how we, our current policies and practices are meeting these indicators. Uh, for example, Global Child Indicator 2 states, immigration detention of minors is prohibited. Now, according to Immigration, Refugee, and Citizenship Canada, detention is only used as a last resort. Local child care and welfare services should first be utilized. Uh, and if a child is to be detained, other child rights, such as education, health, and recreation, should be upheld. Uh, unaccompanied and separated children are also not to be detained due to the fact they are alone. With this information, um, although there are the policies and regulations in place, Canada does fall short of meeting this indicator. Global Child Indicator 4. The states are to establish data collection mechanism on refugee and asylum seeking children and assist with settlement services and family tracing and reunification. Now, the IRCC does provide monthly claims uh, for asylum seeking children. Uh, there are also various reunification processes in place, and this is to help locate uh, parents of separated children. Uh, and depending on the sponsorship type, there are also various reunification processes in place, uh, as well as services for once they are resettled in Canada. Uh, and this includes loan programs, provincial programs, as well as third-party organizations. Hmm. There are five other structural indicators that are processes uh, that are evaluated using the same processes. Um, however, one of the great aspects of Global Child is that it doesn't, ask, uh, doesn't only ask whether legislation exists, but whether it's effective. And using this information, I developed the following recommendations. My first recommendation is for family reunification and best interests of the child. Although best interest is mandated, there are certain circumstances where this right is not upheld, and there are policies that actually create barriers. 
For example, the one-year window. This is when an individual's asylum claim is processed, uh, and they are accepted as a permanent resident of Canada. There is a one-year period where family members' claims can be processed concurrently, and this is to keep the family together. It is only granted if the initial application has the name of all dependents indicated on it, as well as if the family members apply within that one year. This is a barrier for families that are separated or they don't know if their loved ones are alive. It's also problematic if they're separated and they don't know this claim was accepted and they don't apply before that one year times out. This not only prolongs separation, it also goes against a number of other CRC rights. On the right-hand side of the slide, you can see some various impacts or consequences of these barriers. For example, uh, attachment uh, and separation. During this critical period of development, um, separation from parents can impact the neurological development and can affect future physical uh, and emotional uh, maturation. To add, um, seeking asylum can be very stressful, and this can also affect the mental health and well-being of the child, and being separated from important family members can only make this worse. My second recommendation is to improve child protection measures and prohibit detention. Now, Canada lacks national strategies and frameworks specific to children on the move. There are also certain practices, such as detention, which the CRC classifies as a violation of human rights. The committee has also expressed this concern, stating, detention is never in the best interest of the child. Um, however, um, these practices, they are supposed to be used as a last resort. They still occur. And many times, children are in a detention facility to be kept with their families. However, they must stay with the mother while the father is housed in a male-only detention facility. There are also a number of studies of children who have experienced detention in Canada, and they report these experiences as being frightening, having little activities or toys to play with. They can only go outside twice a day, and they're almost always supervised by officials. This can generate acute and toxic stress, as well as elevate harmful hormone levels. This can affect the physical and mental health of the child. My last recommendation today is helping resettled families living in poverty. Uh, refugees often experience barriers for obtaining employment, and this can be because of language or education limitations. Such limitations uh, increase challenges for caring for their children, as well as can result in periods of social and material deprivation. Uh, de prolonged periods of deprivation are associated with uh, physical and cognitive uh, no, so sorry. Uh, <laughs> uh, delays, uh, as well as affects the, um, uh, sorry, and can also affect the uh, food security and housing and other social determinants of health that we're all very familiar with. These recommendations all structure around uh, what government and what policy and legislation. However, what can public health professionals do? We should practice trauma-informed care as well as engage in ongoing cultural safety and sensitivity training. This includes understanding the common barriers for accessing services and care, such as language limitations, lack of resources, as well as fear of discrimina uh, discrimination. We should be aware of the current leg legislation to understand how these standards influence health and well-being of the children. This includes having meaningful consultation with those affected, which means listening to what the child has to say. Despite these stressful experiences, uh, many children demonstrate incredible resiliency, and this is what we should focus on and foster. We should promote self, uh, we should promote empowerment and self-determination as well as create positive learning experiences, uh, facilitate host language acquisition, and create spaces where we can celebrate cultural and religious differences. My closing note is that Canada has not yet had to deal with migration issues to the same degree other countries are currently experiencing. However, with the increased mobilization of children globally, we must adopt the necessary federal frameworks and child protection procedures, as well as improve Canada's national reporting system of the CRC as we proactively prepare for the likely rise of children claimants in our system. 
I would like to thank Dr. Ziba Vigri uh, and Kara Pearson and the rest of the Global Child team, uh, as well as the school's public health and social policy. I'd also like to say hello to my family in North Bay, <laughs> Ontario. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. <laughs> well, since those family are watching, we've got to be very nice to her when it comes to the questions. <laughs> so there must be some questions here. Great presentation, thank you. Um, I'm just wondering, the, um, the UN declaration, does it outline any kind of actions against countries that violate these particular articles quite vigorously? And I'm thinking here of the United States. Mm -hmm. um, it's the almost universal um, ratification of the CRC. Uh, so there are various countries uh, namely, the U.S. has yet to ratify the CRC. However, uh, there are a mandatory reporting system, not mandatory, but strongly recommended. And every five years, ratified countries are to report and kind of show where their progress is. And then the Committee on the Rights of the Child comments on where they can improve uh, and do better. And so, yes? There is a process where <laughs> I think that was the question. Uh, yeah, so there, so there are processes in place, uh, and it's, I guess it's improving accountability. So although the uh, committee does express these concerns and highlights areas where countries can improve, it is ultimately up to the country to adopt them. Hello, hi. Great presentation. Um, you were specifically talking about a national framework um, mm -hmm. for dealing with these issues. I was wondering if there currently exists anything on a smaller scale, like if we have anything provincially in any of the provinces, um, or if different regions, uh, health regions or cities are using any kind of frameworks to address these issues, uh, especially in the light of um, increased immigration that, that we're seeing in Canada. Yeah. Uh, Seeking asylum and migration is a very complex topic and multinational, uh, and there's only certain parts I can highlight for my presentation. Uh, however, there are some federal frameworks in place, for example, the Immigration and Refugee Protection Act, and there are parts about children, that's Canada's national framework. There are parts of it that talk about children, however, it's not very comprehensive. Um, there's a lot of parts uh, regarding the CRC that are omitted, uh, and it really just kind of glosses over the problems that are, that are present. So they, they are there, they're just not comprehensive. Uh, they're also very complex because the federal government obviously controls uh, immigration, but then the provincial government also has their own policies and legislations put in place. For example, the one-year window doesn't apply in Quebec, uh, but applies in most other provinces. Uh, so there are quite a different variation as well as in BC, uh, the majority of uh, immigration that you see is economic. Uh, close to about 7% of it is for refugees, whereas you'll see close to 20% in Ontario for, um, non, for um, refugees and for, what is it called, the shared class. I've just got one quick question around <laughs> the cost of the, sort of the recording, the data collection. Who, where does that money come from? And the logistics, presumably, that's a very difficult task in terms of collecting good data. Yeah, and that's where you see a lot of variation in the reporting of the CRC. Uh, countries with higher resources tend to have more comprehensive uh, reports. Uh, and I guess that is the, the goal of Global Child, is to have a more uniformed uh, reporting system. I cannot speak to the cost direct cost to it, however. <laughs> okay, well, thank you very much. For thank you. <laughs>